it has really been hard coping even right now uh, this money it's like imekunywa maji hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel um today we are doing something new um i'm here at a different location away from the kitchen i'm at the kikuyu garden those in kikuyu you know the place if you don't know the place it's just on uh, kikuyu road just before kikuyu town between the kikuyu hospital or alliance high school and kikuyu kikuyu town yes so it's a lovely location i love the place it's a good place for my talk show today i'm going to give you my story of how many people know that uh, we had a very big hotel in karen elegant garden hotel but it's not there anymore so what happened today i'm here to give you the story i've healed i've let me say i've healed and i can talk about it it hasn't been easy of course it is it has been such a challenge it was such a big big blow Unaona ile umekusanya all the to savings you gather here and there you've borrowed a, ba a big bank loan you've set up a business and after four months it's not there anymore so this is the story so yeah it was uh, last year September that's when we opened the restaurant i remember the hotel on 1st of uh, September so and uh, it was a dream come true because i'm i'm usually so much passionate and uh about cooking and uh, baking yeah so this is a venture that we had started with my husband so um we the dream started way back last year in april was it april may yes it it started way back in may when now there was lockdown and we were really cooking i really perfected my cooking skills and all that and but before then i love good meals for me by the good meal anytime even if i don't have i'm so broke i can't eat bad food yes because I've, i'm broke or anything so i love good food and i love cooking good food so and actually that's what i do here in my channel so check out my other my previous videos Yes, yeah, so I wanted to bring this good food that I'm so passionate about to other people. So we did our market research. Actually, my husband was the one doing the main bit of uh, the practical bit of doing the market research, coming up with the business plan, all the strategies we need to put in place and all that. Yeah, so we by was it october yeah it was in june so we started looking for a place an ideal place for that restaurant we started in kilimani we looked into lavington kileleshwa we just couldn't get a good place because we wanted again a place with um with a bit of gardens you see now we wanted to somehow merge the two the hotel and the bakery yeah so when we have uh like people are celebrating a birthday they can have a space for their birthday and they can have a cake or even actually even wedding small weddings yeah so we couldn't get a place now uh the agent who was um helping us look for a place one day just told us i found a place in karen are you interested to come and look and we were like why not our main interest was in kilimani but we don't mind going to karen if um, we get such a place as the one we are looking for so it was on a two acre piece of land uh, and it was actually the double of what we were looking for and the price was more or less the same like in kilimani and kileleshwa so we saw we thought why not we need to come here and because now we saw a, 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 a different opportunity that was not in our business plan we saw in this area we could uh, do wedding care we could do weddings because of the grounds we could do photo session grounds we could do outside catering we could do now the small events uh, there was the pool uh, there was now the accommodation yeah so now actually even uh this was even more way beyond what was in our business plan and we just uh we decided that uh, we are going to give it a try and we started um 
because we had uh, everything planned actually even before we got the place we had already ordered for furniture we had ordered for utensils uh utensils we ordered from evelyn actually if you need your utensils like she shopped for us everything everything that we needed for the restaurant the finding uh, the fine dining restaurant she brought everything on board and uh, furniture we had ordered uh, from different places then um uh, we had actually done most of the things even before we got the premise because we started early planning so when uh, we got the place it just took us two weeks there was no much renovation needed so we just uh, started so now after um after now uh i i remember yes we opened on first uh, september we had holy mass we are catholics and uh, we anything any business we start we believe in its dedication so we did holy mass the priest blessed the uh, the place uh, we called our friends to do the opening and all that yes and it picked very well um then uh, now we we just did a small opening then we were to do a ground a grand lounge where we had invited Jalango as the chief guest. So when um and uh, all these as uh, uh, I think something that I didn't mention earlier, we or had already engaged a lawyer. We had signed a lease agreement with the landlady. Our lawyer had uh, verified it was a legit premise, but there is one very important step we had skipped. I'm going to tell you about it in a few. Yeah, so we started sending invite, sending invites for the grand launch. First, we met Jalango, talked to him. He agreed to come and do the launch. Yeah, then we started doing invites. We did. We started doing a lot of publicizing in social media. And a day before the launch, the launch was to be on was actually on nineteenth October. We get a call from the Karen OCS. Actually, we had. At first, a day before we had, uh, uh, that was uh, on 17th, we had, not 17th actually, it was our 15th. We had gone to see her asking for security because we expected a high-end guest um, who needed, uh, and we needed, we just needed uh, our security. We had talked to the OCS and she had allowed us to have the party and uh, she had promised to give us the security. And uh, then now, uh, two days before the event now, that was on 17th, we get a call again from the OCS and she's like, by the way, you guys, have you talked to the community, to the current uh, community? Uh, community, it was, it's called what? Karengeta. There was that Karengeta. So have you informed them about the event, about the hotel and everything? Because I've received a call and they're saying, that event is not happening they will stop it and we were like who are they as in why should they stop our event and we've planned everything and we have already informed you and they were like no in karen you have to inform the community before you do such things huh and that is where our problems now started now i got the contact of the chairman of the uh, area I talked to him. He's, he was a very mature uh, and understanding man. So we discussed and we agreed that we were to... Of course, we one, there were conditions. We are not going to make noise. There were... There were there, there is in, uh, our music would be moderated, so no noise to the neighborhood. Two, we are going to have a sitting and see how the hotel should uh, continue because the first place actually before we set it up we were supposed to have a meeting with them and uh, they approve of the hotel or not so a step we skipped but we didn't know yeah so those are some of the lessons i'll be, I'll be telling you i learned uh, we learned along the way so number two so we talked to him we agreed and at least uh, he agreed that the the function should go as agreed but we were supposed to meet after the function so the function happened it was very good very lively there was high turnover of people we had actually to borrow parking kwa neighbor because uh, we people really attended very well and uh, the response was very good so now after the launch was over now we called for a meeting with the community leaders 
So we had a meeting and now that when they now they started uh, raising a lot of issues that we had not uh, our lawyer, the lawyer of the landlady had not told us, the landlady had, had not told us about change of user. So you see now the the place did not have a change of user to the commercial. And when we asked the um, landlady, actually the place was attractive to us because it was previously a rest, uh, hotel where she told us the previous occupants were, as I have mentioned, it was a hotel before. It was called Kisima Garden. Kisima? Yes, Kisima Garden, something like that. Ki was it Kisima? No, Kisima House. It was called Kisima House. Yeah, so, and Kisima House had left the place to go and open their own big hotel somewhere else in uh, Mombasa. And um, it, she, they had secured a change of user. She sent us some documents to, to show that. And uh, we also, our lawyer uh, looked, uh, drew the documents and he was like, he was okay and satisfied with them. And we were very, when we were going to meet the community leaders, we were very confident the place has a change of user. We have every right of being there. Actually, we are very, very confident. And now, but now when we went, listen to them, for them, they have their side of story. The place doesn't have a change of user. And for us, the side of our story, the place has a change of user. We have some documents to prove that. So we had a series a series of meetings because we could not agree. They have their side of story. We have our side of story. We have documents. We were now to go and get the real certificate, which the landlady was to get now, apparently from the Kisima house. They are the ones who had, um, according to her, they are the one who are, they are the ones who had done the change of user. By then, we didn't. We actually we we, we are hearing new terms: change of user, commercial. Anyway, it's a story of another day. Yeah, so we we had uh, then all this time. It's uh, um, it's a war between us, between the leaders, uh, the community, the residents are saying we can't allow our hotel to be uh, to be in our midst, nini, and all that. So what's uh, all this while now? They reached to a point where we had a disagreement, and they decided to uh, close the barrier. So there is a day we had a an event whereby it was we used we used to have different kind of events uh, every weekend so there is a day we had a major event and we had invited quite a number of guests and guess what that day they decided they are not opening the barrier for people going to the hotel and anyone would come they are being told that your hotel is illegal you can't go so that day we lost big because we had court we had hired different service providers and people could come the moment they are told they just open the barrier for themselves or they are talked to arrogantly by by the security people they would just stand back and go so that day we made losses and that now was a wake up call like are we ready to continue with this kind of war we need to find a solution so we had a, now we had a a serious meeting with the residents again now this time round we were we were almost surrendering now and telling them like you people what do you want now for us to do we sat down we had a very sober meeting and by the end of the day it it was clear we were not we could not stay in that place because first place the landlady all along was looking for the document that uh, for the certificate of change of user to commercial she hadn't gotten it she could not get it so the residents had become impatient they knew the truth which we didn't know so we had uh, we agreed they gave us around three months to clear from the area as we look for another place by then the um, we had invested so much of course we didn't have any other money to go and start elsewhere and the place by this time the place had picked we were having friends who were coming to, uh, uh, who were bringing their birthday parties we had a booking wedding books bookings actually when we were leaving we had to do a refund of four weddings because people had booked up to april yeah so we find the place and we had done a lot of marketing i had done a lot of uh, marketing on my social media pages i had used influencer marketers to do the marketing we had done paid ads on Facebook, on Instagram. So we had really done a lot of marketing. The place had picked. 
So this was not a business at unaanza una, unaanza then you're giving it months to pick. No, we started and it picked immediately. So that was God and we really appreciated that. But now it was all signs were clear. We could not stay in the place because we were not peaceful. Actually, I could get even phone calls at midnight and tell your people to switch off the music. Yeah? The music is too low for us. So it was a, a, a three months of, of back and forth, of hassles, of struggling. And now by uh, by end of December, we decided, no, we are not going to continue this way. And no peace of mind. There is a lot of uncertainty now. We need to think of a way forward. So we left in uh, mid-January. And uh, by the time we were leaving, we decided now we could not clearly get another place like that. We've already invested so much in the rooms, in the restaurant and everything. And it was so spacious. So we left and uh, went to Adams. It's in Applehood building. We were so financially constrained. We couldn't raise money for renovation because renovation we called um, an interior designer. And he asked before a million shillings is here on the table, I cannot do anything. Yeah, so we had, and uh, this time we need to raise rent, three months rent. The rent and uh, what is it called? Service charge was coming to 186,000. So times three, times two. How much is that? So do your maths. And then uh, there, there is also the renovation. So roughly we needed around 2 million to start off in this uh, new other place. So we couldn't raise that money because already we are, we are, we were drained, like totally drained in current. So we, we now got, a, uh, we talked to a few friends who are in business, whom we know can uh, support, can come and form a partnership. Finally, we were able to get one of our friends. So we did a business valuation and came up with the, uh, the, the worth of the business. We did a partnership agreement. We signed with our lawyer and yeah, we started. Yeah, so again now here we had to do a lot of marketing because the building was quite new. And so we did a lot of marketing. We engaged Akode's daughter, that is fancy. She was doing for us intensive marketing. And actually, that girl, I can recommend her for marketing anytime. If you give her a marketing job, she gives it her all. She did for us a lot of marketing. We also did a lot of marketing, social media, physical. We were producing brochures every other day. Our marketing team going office by office every other day. We did a lot of marketing. It started picking slowly by slowly. Actually, one month, exactly one month after opening lockdown, restaurants, uh, no people, uh, people are not supposed to access the restaurants. Yeah. It just take away and all that. So for that one month, the business went down all our efforts. But uh, now we it picked up again when we, after the lockdown, we started the intensive marketing. We really, really tried and all that. Then now after that, uh, something I didn't mention, we are both in full-time job, my husband and I, our partner as well. So it was... Um, it was a challenge now being there physically to monitor the business. This young baby, this uh, business that we've just started. So we were not there most of the time. Our employees, by the way, they really tried. Wherever they are, guys, feel appreciated. You really tried. But uh, it was just not meant to be. So we tried. We, we tried until uh, when? Is it um, two months? We closed our doors when? Uh, October... Yes, end of October, that's when we decided, no, this is too much because we could, you find we could get money from our pockets to pay rent, sometimes to pay, actually to pay rent and employees. So we saw this is not worth it. So yes, guys, it's sometimes it's good to quit. Yeah, we try to look for a buyer to buy the, uh, to just buy the hotel and the restaurant and see whether they can probably bring in more better strategies and um for it to pick up and people probably someone who can have a very good manager or be there physically to manage the business so we tried looking for people we talked to our friends to help us uh, look around we were not able to get anyone so we decided to give the business back to to just hand over the building back to the 
to the landlord because again they were getting impatient we had asked for a grace period of november so that uh we could get for we could get someone but by november we had not gotten someone so we just gave the business back to them and yeah so <laughs> that is the long story the long short story of the restaurant it's not there and guys at jakufa to go alive so we came together with my husband and asked ourselves what are we going to do so we de decided now this is a big loss that we, we are fa that is uh, f uh, that has faced us and we can't just sit down and whine and cry ourselves and sink into depressions so we have a life ahead we have uh, we have our children that are relying on us we have other people we have other responsibilities so we can't afford to sit down and uh, cry and um, whine about this loss so we had to think very fast one my husband is an author so he has authored quite a number of books previously but he decided he's going to now do a self selling so the other books he has written is through publish publishing houses so he decided he's going to have his own uh, his own uh, book he's going to publish his own book so that we uh, he can self sell and we can raise some amount to help us recover two i had uh, by the this youtube channel when we opened the hotel in karen i forgot about it <laughs> but so now when uh, the hotel had fallen and i was like i came back checking now trying to see what can i do i saw my youtube channel had i uh, had how many subscribers four thousand subscribers and the last time i had checked there were just a thousand one of my videos had gone viral twenty seven thousand views and i was like oh no i need to go back to do this i started social media marketing uh we fortunately god has really been faithful so i got quite a number of companies that i could do social media marketing for i realized uh, something I know I'm usually so passionate about marketing, but I've never thought about doing about doing marketing for other people. So it was just marketing for our businesses, marketing for our businesses. So I thought, ah, guys, I can start influencer marketing, and that's how my influencer marketing started. I've been trying to get um, brands coming on board for me to market for them. So it hasn't been easy, but uh, I can see the light at the end of tunnel uh, of the tunnel. Uh, my following has been growing on my social media pages. Then my YouTube channel has really been growing. I believe by next year, that's my year, I will get uh, as many brands coming on board. Then uh, for, uh, there is also a recipe book. I, I had started writing a recipe book, but along the way I had abandoned it. So I decided to start uh, to complete um, my recipe book. I sell the same. I also rekindled my online classes, I had stopped selling the tutorials, so I started selling them. Yeah, and that's how we've managed. Um, uh, uh, at some point, uh, I wanted to actually, um, I will still see a therapy because I feel your loss. Simcheso. So I was the other day sharing with someone and uh, one thing I will, I will see a therapy. My husband tells me him is just okay. He doesn't need to see a therapist. But guys, if you're going through a difficult situation, it's okay. It's good to seek help. Uh, one more thing I've uh, been sharing with my friends. I've been telling them about what I'm feeling, uh, the challenges and everything. Talking about it has also helped me heal. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, right now as we speak apart from the challenges of paying off the loans i'm just okay i don't regret and then oh other benefits it has come that uh, the, the hotel in karen i've met i met people one very uh, uh, one person i really hold dear and i see that lady is a, a destiny connector to me i met amakove wala amakove wherever you are know that you really hold, i really value you and you, you're, you're dear and close to my heart. Meeting you at Karen was such a breakthrough for me because now you remember after we met, you there is a, there is a, a conference for women that Amakovi organized after that. And now the way I had met, uh, when I met her in Karen, I read about her, I saw her influence, the way she's so passionate about uh, empowering women and all that so i started following her and uh, i decided i was by the way i was very broke when uh, that conference was happening people were paying five thousand was it four thousand or five thousand i think around five thousand and i decided i am going for this conference 
So I went for that conference and that conference was such an eye opener. I remember Sarah Rickson, she's now my coach. She was um she was the speaker of that conference. So she talked about she was talking about resilience in uh, during covid times how we should uh, uh, be resilient and uh, try to overcome these uh, covid uh, uh, hard time situations. So and uh, I really learned a lot. I learned um now, I learned, uh, like my case, uh, we were going through a hard time having lost a business, but all was not lost, yeah? As long as there is hope. And then we have the energy, uh, we are still in good health. That is what really mattered, to strategize and move forward. So, um, yes, I picked quite a number of lessons from that conference. Uh, kidogo, Kidogo, Amakove featured me in uh, one of her, uh, um, when she was celebrating her 43rd birthday, she featured me in her 43 at 43 episodes about uh, women in business and she featured our bakery, Beldina's Delicacies and from that post, we got a lot of clients, yeah, our bakery saw a lot of growth, something that I really appreciate, she later formed a group of women in business we are the 43 of us and we are the kind of insights I get from that group are uh, just uh, something that I can trade for. So, and I've met many other people, actually my network. So I count my, the one of the main thing and value. I really find from that I got uh, from the hotel Karen, something I can't trade for. It's the network, the kind of networks I have at the moment. It's something that I, I could not have bought or purchased with money. Yeah? So we lost a lot of money, yes, but that is what we gained. And then again, character development. Yeah? So, Kitambo before that uh, business, anything small, kwa bakery, could uh, something as like the water bill has not been paid and the caretaker is here asking for the payment and I, was, I would just panic from wherever I am. But now it has taught me how to talk to creditors, how to talk to people if I owe people. I don't just like um, uh, uh, like um, hibernate or uh, panic when I get a phone call from a creditor. No, I just face the situation as it is. I tell them, I pick a call. I tell them, Mr. Caretaker, yes, I am aware the the water bill has not been paid, but I am working to pay it uh, to pay it on this and this date. Please bear with that. But Kitambo, I didn't know how to talk to people you owe. Me, someone calls me and I'm like, what do I tell them? Now, I'm, what do I tell I start panicking. Rent. In Africa, it's a rent. And I start panicking. Yeah, but that, it has taught me communication. It has taught me to not panic when you're in a difficult situation. It has taught me how to deal with situations. And it has taught me when you're in a difficult situation, that is not the end of the world. Yeah? So, um, it has taught me how to deal, to handle difficult situations. I am very strong right now. Actually, I am 10 times stronger before I started that uh, business. So, there are so many uh, benefits and gains that uh, came out from the hotel. There was monetary loss, but the gains, I, it's something I can trade for. So guys, that's my story. Um, if you're going through a difficult situation, tell us Apoqua comments. If you're inspired to be happy, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please click that subs subscription button and the notification button so that every time I upload a new video, you are among the first people to see it. I can assure you I have a lot of content uh, waiting for you. Have you subscribed? Notification button? Okay, let's continue. Lesson number one, if you want to start a business, please start, don't start big at once. Answer Kidogo, Kidogo and then learn the ropes. With time, you will have your, the big venture you want to. Number two, if before you get into a premise, do your due diligence. Let no one tell you, this, uh, there was a similar business that lasted for 10 years, like we were told. And it thrived very well. So don't just assume on here. Say, do your due diligence. Engage a commercial lawyer. Not just any other lawyer. A commercial lawyer. Yeah? 
So those are the uh, some of the main lessons I really learned. We learned that is. So guys, why am I telling you my story? This is a sad story, but I'm telling it so confidently uh, without so much like way situation because we've we've recovered. We've not per se recovered, but it is really really hard. But uh, what I want to uh, to encourage you guys today is you can go through a difficult situation because ours, by the way, losing that kind of money is not easy and not that we had it somewhere stored. It was ille hustling to have all these monies together. So losing that, uh, uh, that kind of business, the business that had a really peaked and Every, it was like a dream come true and we were so excited and we knew we've made it. But now it was a short-lived happiness. So I would like to encourage you, whatever situation that you go through, just remain positive. So guys, that is simply my story. Most people, people have been speculating here and there. Some actually like the other day I was just walking around uh, my workplace and someone was like, eh. And I was like, um, oh, okay, I wish you knew. So anyway, that is my story. No more speculations. And even those who want to speculate, it's okay. You can go ahead. Another character development. Uh, by the way, I don't care what people say about me. As long as I know what I'm doing, it's aligned with my purpose. I don't care what people say. And I would encourage people uh, people out there, if you, you're doing something, if you're going through a situation, don't care about what people say. It's your life. Yeah? So, guys, that's my story. I hope I have encouraged someone. I hope I have inspired someone. In every cloud, dark cloud, there is a silver lining. Just in every difficult situation, try to see about anything positive out of that situation and move on with it. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here again, please remember to subscribe. Click that notification button and watch my videos. Share them with your friends. Thank you so much, guys. Till next time. See you. Bye.